Let's start with Edward Snowden. Remarkable mm -hmm. young man, 29 years old. He's working as a consultant for the National Security Agency, which is larger than the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency, but most people knew nothing about it, uh, not only in Poland, but in the United States. <clears throat> where it operates. Well, I'm sure it operates in Poland as well. It operates all over the world. So here is this young man who's working as a consultant for the National Security Agency, and he sees he has access to anything he wants. This young guy who actually didn't even graduate from high school, he can get into the president's email, the president of the United States, and he is saying, should I have access to this? Shouldn't can I spy, he says, I can spy on any American I want to. I can spy on anyone anywhere in the world. Should I be able to do this? Shouldn't the American people know about this? And he got very disturbed. And he knew that the only way he could prove his point is to take the documents that he had access to, because it's always denied in the United States. And he felt the only way he could release this information if he was outside the country, because if he was inside the country, he could be arrested. He was doing all of this at the time of the trial of Bradley Manning, who was a young American soldier, intelligence officer who was in Iraq, and he saw some horrific video and documents that he felt the world should know about that uh, sh showed evidence of war crimes, like the bombing of a group of Iraqis in Baghdad um, that also killed two Reuters employees, the World News Organization, and the Reuters had appealed for years to the military to get the video because they figured they had video and the military would never let them have it. And here was this young Bradley Manning who had the video and he's saying, my God, this shows that the US killed civilians. And he released it and the rest is history. He is facing decades in prison. He is in prison now. He's become a woman. His name is Chelsea Manning. Um, he uh, was punished severely, and you never heard his voice again after he was arrested more than three years ago, after she was arrested, because now a woman. Um, this is extremely serious. Uh, Edward Snowden saw what happened, that if he wanted to get word out, he wanted to be able to f be free to get the word out. He said he didn't care if he was in prison for the rest of his life, Edward Snowden but he wanted to ensure that what he got out had an effect. He didn't want to be prevented before he got the word out. So he went to Hong Kong. He met with Laura Poitras and Glenn Greenwald, two remarkable journalists. And Laura filmed him, and Glenn interviewed him. And that video was put out on the Guardian website. And, um, and the documents have continued to be released. We don't even know the half of it at this point. And what Glenn Greenwald has done is writing for different publications in Brazil Globo and uh, Britain The Guardian, now starting his own major news website, um, writing with newspapers, Der Spiegel in Germany, uh, all over the world, releasing information about the level to which the United States is spying on foreign leaders like Angela Merkel in Germany, like uh, Dilma Rousseff, the president of Brazil, who then refused to come up for a state dinner to the United States in October because should I want to know what's going on? It's not only her personally. The US was spying on Pe Petrobras, which is the state oil company in Brazil. And we don't think about this as much. You much more, the public responds to when individuals are named who have been spied on. But what a lot of the US government does is spying on foreign corporations on behalf of U.S. corporations. It's like corporate espionage, and corporations know this well, and corporations have powerful heads, and they're putting pressure on their leaders, like, what's going on here? What is the U.S. doing? It's extremely serious. Spying on the United Nations, spying on world leaders, getting documents. When Ban Ki-moon went to meet with President Obama, President Obama already had Ban Ki-moon's talking points because they were able to get them. Now, at first, they said Edward Snowden is a liar. Nothing is true. Uh, the head of national intelligence named James Clapper spoke before Congress, I should say lied before Congress, and said, no, we're not spying. And that's what they could say as long as the documents were not there. But once the documents were shown, they had to say, he said, I, I don't know what possessed me to say that. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. If it was a regular citizen, they would be charged with perjury. This matters. This is subverting democracy in the United States and all over the world. Edward Snowden is charged with espionage. He went from Hong Kong, he's now in Russia, not because he wanted to go to Russia. You know, some people say, why did he go to Russia? Because when he was flying out of Hong Kong, he got political asylum, I think, in Venezuela, also in Bolivia and other places. Latin America in particular has been 
um, very welcoming of him as Latin America sees they're being spied on state after state, country after country. Um, uh, when he was flying out of Hong Kong, he was transiting through Russia, but the US pulled his passport. So when he landed in Russia to transit to Latin America, he couldn't go anywhere because he didn't have a passport. And that's why he was stuck in Russia. And then the Russian government gave him temporary asylum for a year. So what happens, we'll see. But the release of this information has changed the world. Um, we're sitting in a cafe here, Cafe Kipa in Warsaw. And there are little posters and, uh, on the tables. And one of them is a quote of the Dalai Lama. And it says, if you ever doubted that an individual can make a difference, have you ever tried sleeping with a mosquito? Um, if you ever thought an individual could make a difference, what Edward Snowden has done in releasing these documents, but that is not enough. What journalists have done then in writing up the significance of this and releasing these documents like Glenn Greenwald is um, remarkably brave.